Welcome to this video, which is the first in a short series describing how to create a new die set in Symmetron. In these videos, we'll begin building the die set. This video is intended as a tutorial, and we recommend you follow along and pause the video when necessary. We wish to thank you for your interest shown in Symmetron and hope you will search out other videos in this series. We begin building the die set by creating a new assembly. Here we'll choose if we're working in millimeters or inches. You should save this new file straight away to ensure it has the name exactly as we want it. We will put this file in a new folder so that we can keep track of all the components. Everything for this die set will be saved in that folder. We will name the file and you can always go back later and rename it if necessary. I have chosen the name Millimeter Die Shoes. Now we can start construction of this die set. To begin, we will add a new main plane on the XY plane and name it Main Die Plane. All the die subassembly will be built from this plane. In this video, we will work off the die plane because we will build the strip off the die side of material. However, if you prefer to work on the punch side and strip, then build your die set based on the punch side. We will add a parallel plane for the stripper. This plane touches the top of the coil, so the distance between the die plane and the stripper plane will be our coil thickness. We'll name this plane Main Stripper Plane. We'll create a third plane for our punch plane. This is another parallel plane. It is controlled by a dimension that will be used later for building relationships. This means we can set the stack height for both sides of the die using the setup. We will name this plane Main Punch Plane. So now we're going to add our subassemblies. So to begin, we will create our first subassembly, which will be the die assembly. We could put it on the assembly UCS. But to keep everything consistent, pick the die plane and then pick that UCS location. This means everything is going to be driven from the main UCS. Activate the main assembly and add a new subassembly. This time, let's do our stripper subassembly. Place it using the same method as before. This time, pick the stripper plane and pick that UCS location. Now we can use the same process again to add the punch assembly. Add the assembly, select the plane, and pick the UCS. If you have several die sets to build, you can save this file as a die set starter file once these subassemblies are built. This file could become a template for several versions of the die set. One might have just the shoes, another may have the shoes with the punch and die steels. Using this basic construction, we can start building the die assembly. Add a new part for the die plate. We will work from the center of the die out to make it easier to visualize. From the menu, select place on the face. We'll pick our location. Next, we must decide where to put the die steel and how we want to dimension it. We'll go into this more later in this video, but for now, place it a distance away from the center to become the center of the tool, the main subassembly. The new UCS we have created here is positioned at the start of the strip. So, when we work from this location, 
we'll have to remember to dimension it appropriately. We'll create a left to right die so begin sketching the die steel with the UCS on the left side. Now add the dimensions. Set the width and length. All the dimensions are shown in pink because they are constrained. Add a dimension line that specifies half of that distance. And then build a formula by clicking the F button. Link it to that outer dimension. And enter divided by 2. Notice the dimension displays an F in brackets which shows there is a relationship, in this case to the overall width of the block. By using a formula, we can ensure that if the block width changes, it will stay in the center on the die set. We'll set the block thickness and extrude that down to a dimension of 25 millimeters. For now, that will be our rough version of a die plate. In total, we will add three parts to represent the three subassemblies. Next, we will look at the punch side. We start by selecting the punch assembly and adding a new part. We could relate the punch side dimensionally to the die side using geometry in the sketcher. But for now, we will use dimensions. Using the punch plane. Locate the part using the same offset as before. To make sure it is aligned to the die set plane. Set the dimension. Notice you can right click to call up this quick menu which has some of the feature guide controls. Now sketch the punch plate using the same dimensions as the die plate. For this demonstration we are using round numbers for speed and simplicity. We will center the block. So add dimension between the UCS and one of the sides. Make sure everything is constrained. Next, we build the relationships using formulas. For this value, pick the overall width and then type divided by 2. These blocks could also be constrained geometrically center line to center. With the sketch complete, extrude the plate. As before, we'll use round numbers for simplicity. Notice we are always extruding away from the plane. That way we can use the plane to control the height of the assembly. Finally, our stripper assembly needs a stripper plate. Activate the assembly. Add a new part and give it a name. We'll keep the naming convention consistent. Select the plane we want to work with, and we're ready to sketch. Locate the new component on the plane and use the same offset. Let's hide the assemblies we don't need for now. Later in this tutorial, we will put all three of these location dimensions on the same setup function to drive each of these different subassemblies. Open the sketcher and begin drawing the striver. Add the overall dimensions and build the relationships. Remember to divide the dimension by two. and extrude away from the plane. Now you can see we have all three of our primary blocks. The stripper, punch, and die.
we need to put a backup plate in all three of these subassemblies. So we'll start with the punch backup. Name it punch backup. But you could call it punch plate or punch retainer. You can use whichever naming conventions you prefer. We'll work on the back of the punch backup plate. That's the side that is away from the plane or away from the coil. We'll dimension that using that same UCS that we're using to control the subassembly. And we will use the same three dimensions as before. Length, width, and half width. We build those same relationships. Tying that half dimension to the overall width. And now we can extrude it. The distance isn't important because we'll control that distance in setup later. Double click both plates to open quick edit mode. Link the width of the backup to the width of the punch plate, then bind the two links together, making a functional relationship. This means that if the overall size of the punch plate changes, the backup plate will automatically change. Exit using the middle mouse button. Let's change the color of the components to make everything clearer using the display color guide. We'll make the punch plates gray. Now we can clearly see which side we're working on. Next, we'll work on the stripper. Name the new part stripper backup. And save it. Let's hide the punch assembly for now to make things a bit clearer. Locate the part on the UCS. Now we sketch the part, add dimensions, and add the relationship. This video is designed to show you how to create the die set and to understand what these different relationships are accomplishing. These relationships aren't visible in the setup which contains the advanced and complicated relationships and equations relating one set of dimensions to another. Remember to extrude away from the plane and add dimensions and relationships. When this is complete, you could save the file as your new base template. It's just a matter of what works best for you. Finally, apply a color to our stripper place and hide them for now. We'll work on our dyed assembly. We will create a backup plate that is extruded away from the plane and the center of the tool. Place the plane on the bottom face of the block, like you see here. Open the sketcher and create the block shape. You can see the guidelines display when you are aligned with the bottom edge. Add the dimensions. Add the relationship. Extrude down and away.
and tied the length and width dimensions of the two plates together. And we mustn't forget to add a color for clarity. Now we have our three main subassemblies. Each have their respective plate and backup plate. The next major thing to consider is the shoes. Construct the shoes working off the same UCS that is positioned to the left so we can build the relationships in a logical, methodical way. So let's start by creating our die shoe. The bold highlight text shows the die assembly is active. The shoe is going to go on the back of our backup plate using the same UCS. This method might be too elaborate for your needs. Alternatively, you could build all these plates off the main assembly UCS. In most cases, this would probably be perfectly fine. This video is to highlight ways to avoid getting confused. We'll dimension this in the same way, locating from the UCS and then giving it an overall dimension. Notice we are adding an additional length here. On the example, we have L1 is 50 millimeters, so that the shoe extends past everything to the left. We give our shoe a thickness, repeating the relationships from the center to the width overall dimension. And we'll do the same as we get onto the punch assembly. Double click the punch assembly, make it active. Add a new component by clicking assembly, add new part. We give it a name. Place it on the back of the backup plate. Work using the column of UCS as that you can see here. Pick the back of the plate as our sketch plane. Draw the rectangle to represent the shoe. Locate everything by dimensions. Make that overhang length 50 millimeters again. Use half of the overall width as the dimension from the UCS to the side to keep the block centered. And then give it an overall length. Extrude it to the same depth as before. And there we have a drafted die set. Next, we link the shoes so any edits to the die are reflected in the punch. Build the relationship to the die shoe, so the punch is always matches the die. The overall punch shoe length is tied to the overall die shoe length. We'll even link the overhang distance in later. We will specify that later in the setup when we build that. So here's our completed rough construction for our die set assembly. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. Please look for our next presentation in this series, where we move to the next stage of creating the die set.